Poop Transplant Horror Stories. I'm not talking about a movie at your local cinema theater. I'm talking about fecal microbial transplants, poop transplants done by doctors across the country. There is a lot of excitement in the medical community about this particular therapy done by gastroenterologists. This therapy has been lauded to treat a lot of different conditions. We talked about this last week, gastrointestinal conditions like C. difficile, the irritable bowel, and now they're even getting into treating people with depression and anxiety and, and uh, you know different kinds of mental and mood disorders. But as I talked about last week, you have to be aware of the whoops factor because five, 10 years down the road, and sometimes even sooner, as you're gonna find out here in a minute, there is this factor that comes out and they say, whoops, we didn't realize that this particular treatment had these side effects. So we're gonna continue our discussion today, and I wanna talk right now about a Food and Drug Administration recent finding back in 2019, there was actually two people that got a serious life-threatening uh, gastrointestinal infection from E. coli. One of the people died from the donor's feces that was given to them in a capsule. And they um, actually had this treatment documented that this person died from this particular uh, fecal microbial transplant. Now, this, uh, this therapy is again, is controversial because again, it, they're just jumping into it, considering it to be this cure-all for a lot of different problems. But I want to read you a quote from a medical doctor, Dr. Blazer, who makes a comment about uh, fecal microbial transplants that I think is well worth listening to. And this is what he said. He says that the two reported cases by the FDA represent the tip of the iceberg. Well, what does he mean by that? Well, he's talking about there's going, you know, when you talk about iceberg, the tip of it's just the top. There's a lot of, you know, things below it. The mass is below it. So he's thinking we better be very wary of this particular treatment and not just jump into it so quickly. Um, he also said this. He said that the, the particular treatment that was given is that we have to understand that it may be identifiable only after the fact. So the person who has a, an infectious bacteria inside of them, that's talking about a donor now, they may actually have a bacterium that they actually don't recognize at the time that's a lethal bacteria. So he's saying that you've got to be aware. Now, you've got to consider this. There's a couple of factors that I think I want to bring up that are very important. Now, the, the first thing I want to talk about is that the microbes in our gut, the good bacteria, the bad bacteria, and the ugly ones, they can change very rapidly. As a matter of fact, researchers have proven that after one meal, that the bacteria could shift and change. Also, the hormone levels uh, inside the gut are significant. So what in fact, if the problem occurs that a person that's the donor has, let's say depression or anxiety, well, now they're finding that some people are actually after the fecal transplants that they're developing characteristics from the donor like depression and anxiety. So that's another consideration. Also, we have to be aware that that uh, uh, because this is now being reported, people are hearing about it online and they're doing do-it-yourself fecal transplants at home. Very dangerous because you could have some uh, people who are under control circumstances are end up dying from it. You're gonna have a serious problem with people who are gonna be, do these do-it-yourself treatments at home. So we got to send out some red alerts. The FDA actually put out a national alert about this therapy. So don't be so quick 
to, to jump on board with this. Because remember, patients who are ill, if you're suffering with some serious illness, whether it's irritable bowel, or it's um, Clostridium difficile, or you have any medical condition that's serious, and they're treating depression, and they're even getting in now looking at treating cancer and diabetes with this particular treatment, the bottom line is you have to recognize that this is something we have to be very careful about. It's something that we don't want to be just jumping into because uh, this is this is uh, something we can have alternatives to. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But the fact of the matter is, is that people are um, getting these treatments done with uh, without reservations and patients are desperate. When you have a medical condition that's serious, you're desperate for a treatment and you'll just about do anything. So if you have a gastroenterologist that's ready to just go ahead and do this treatment, you could be in for a big surprise. Remember the whoops factor. Now, another thing to consider is, is that people that um, have gotten these fecal transplants, there are animal studies as well as human studies that have found that you can take on the characteristics of the donor from the transplant. So you can end up with weight gain, or you can end up with depression or anxiety, or any number of other things, mood disorders of different sorts. So beware, be careful, remember there's alternatives. And I'm gonna be talking about that to be Friday. I'll be sharing with you some alternatives that are much safer and very effective treatments that you don't have to go this route with the fecal microbial transplants. Um, basically, I'm gonna give you some very safe recommendations that you can use. And these are personal experiences I've had with patients of mine who've had dramatic results with getting over C. difficile when they've even had the problem reoccur medically three or four times given them antibiotics. They didn't treat it, didn't work. And after we instituted our, our natural protocols, they were able to help the patient get over it and never came back. So I want you to um, make sure that you uh, take a look at all alternatives. And I'm going to give you, again, the quick review. We talked today about fecal microbial transplants, abbreviated FMT. This condition or this treatment now is being used for conditions like uh, C. difficile, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue. Uh, the medical community is looking at it for mood disorders, for psychiatric disorders. And, and so even cancer and diabetes is being looked at. So remember now, we've talked about for the longest time that, that death begins in the colon. How you go about treating the colon problems, how you go about reestablishing the good, healthy microbiome is a critical factor. We'll be talking about the alternatives on the next time that I make a post on Friday. So tell your family and friends about it. Until next time, I am Dr. Christosik. Uh, you can call me Dr. Good Carbs. Leave a comment below. And also, um, tell, you know, give me any uh, questions you might have about this subject, and I'll be happy to answer it for you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, Here's to your health.